Good morning. Good morning. Welcome out on this beautiful Sunday. Let's stand and turn to number 133, leaning on the everlasting arms as we sing. Creed number 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. sun shining, spring sprung yesterday, and they really bother my allergies, <laughs> the little blooming yellow trees. This morning for announcements, we want to announce that we have Sunday school every Sunday at 10 a.m. We're learning more about the Matthew chapter 6. Worship service is at 11 a.m. Come and get your fuel for the upcoming week. On 328, come and hear the sermon, His Trial, from Luke chapter 22. Verses 66 through chapter 3, verse 25. 
We have Wednesday night Bible study on the essentials of Christianity. Online Bible studies at 5.30. In-person Bible study is at 6. We still have Sundays left open for the altar flowers. The sign-up sheet is on the bulletin board. There will be virtual Holy Week services the week of March 29th through April the 2nd, each day at noon. The services can be seen on Mountaintop Media TV broadcast or on the Pikeville Pike County Ministerial Association Facebook page. There's some information on their bulletin about the Kentucky United Methodist Children's Home. And uh, then we are also an insert in our bulletins about the D WJSO 90.1 FM on your radio station. Any other announcements? We have a shower coming up for our dear Andrew Fields. Uh, his wedding shower is April the 3rd at 2 o'clock. Him and Hannah will be getting married in May. So their shower is April the 3rd at 2 at the Hilton Gar Garden Inn on the second floor. So keep that, put that in your calendar to know about that. If I get everybody is welcome to attend, and during this time of COVID, we're going to try to make it kind of COVID friendly, or you know, take a little extra effort. And so, uh, Hannah sent out Facebook invitations, some, and so I wanted to make sure everybody in the church knew because I know not everybody has Facebook these days, and not everybody I think. Uh, but anyway, please, everybody is more than welcome to attend. That's the Saturday before Easter, so remember that date and time. For prayer requests this morning, we want to continue to remember Jeff McKinney and Christine, Matt White as he continues his therapy, Aaron Atkins, Cooper Coleman, Amy Walker Skull, Lindsay Emma, Tommy Ford, Alice Kendrick, Morrison Stepp, and the family of Suzanne Hackworth. Any other spoken requests this morning? Chris? Oh. <laughs> he changed his mind. If not, we'll ask our pastor to come lead us in prayer. You guys will notice there's an insert in your bulletin concerning Moody Radio. And, uh, you know, Moody Radio is a wonderful tool that's been used to reach many, many people uh, in our area and other places as well. And it's always been a very encouraging and uplifting broadcast. And as of uh, this year, uh, a lot of the times they've been off air because of the terrible storms and winds they had that knocked the towers out. And so uh, the cost of repairing the towers is something like $50,000, very expensive. And so they're asking for donations. And so as the Lord laid on your heart, there's a place on the, here that you have a, a website you can go to. There's ways that you can donate. And I would encourage you to, to consider that uh, great ministry there. At this time, is there any un unspoken requests? Lift your hand. God sees your hand and knows the needs that it represents. Uh, let us go to the Lord. Let's just take a moment in your silent reflection to offer your adoration and thanksgiving to God. to God. Now bring anyone on your heart as you make supplication for them to the Lord. today. We thank you, God, that you hear our prayers, and Lord, that we can share together, and God, that we can come together and worship you. And God, we pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for it. Amen. This time we're going to uh, recognize our offering today. And uh, uh, Richie's not here. I wonder if, Melinda, if you would feel uh, like praying for the offering. Would that be okay, or am I putting you on the spot there? Okay, so we're going to uh, do our doxology, and, and again, we're thankful for, for the gifts that you give. I'm uh, always pleasantly uh, amazed at, at the blessings that God and brings through you and the community, and, and you all know we've been able to, to help uh, sponsor several different things this last couple months, you know, with the flooding and things, we were able to help with uh, the floods victims down in the Johnson County area. And the Ministerial Association has uh, reimbursed the church for, we, we also uh, did uh, use our card to do the Floyd County uh, that uh, Samantha was working with. And the Ministerial Association has reimbursed for the amount of $500 for that. And we also did Johnson County. So thank you for your giving because it's, uh, it's very important. Our disaster relief fund is uh, going to need to be built back up a little bit, but uh, we're thankful for that. At this time, let's sing our doxology. So, uh, we'd like, if any kids we have here uh, would like to come up, and Samantha, I'm going to ask if they come up around this way so they don't disturb the table, and this section here is where they'll need to be. So you might want to kind of guard, help guard the table. So if the kids want, well, looks like we have one right now, and I don't know where the other one went. Um, but uh, I have hidden something. We have something hid here. And it's in a white cloth, and we'll talk more later about what it is, and we're going to let you find that. This is part of the Passover ritual. And uh, so from this table to the wall, nothing up this way, nothing past the pew there, we have hidden something. So we want to find it. See if you all can find the white cloth that's got the matzo bread in it. So you're going to look for something that looks like this, yes. not this one. All right, so we're a little shy today, so Leslie's going to have to look for it. Where is it? Where could it be? Where could it be? Do you see it? Wait a minute. You were close. You're getting warmer. You're getting warmer. All right. You can bring that to me. And mom can decide when you get to open it. <laughs> All right. Good deal. So thank you. Uh, that's part of the, the uh, ceremony of the Passover. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. And uh, the, the white cloth or the linen cloth is known as the a fecal man. And uh, so we're, we'll look at that. 
All right. So at this time, we have some special music. Sandy Walters, want to come up and sing? So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make pre preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar, jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters. And say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the disciples with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. 
Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one with whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table, or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. <clears throat> Simon, Simon, listen, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you knew me. He said to them, when I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, no, not a thing. He said to them, but now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, it is enough. Let's read together then the prayer to the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, Grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're continuing our theme and I need to get my microphone on here. How are we doing? Okay, I'm sorry, I forgot that. Uh, so we're on, y'all, anybody remember where we are on this, what week, day of the week? Uh, okay, we're actually, yeah, we're actually going to do two days, Wednesday and Thursday today. So you're both right. Um, so just remember that we started out with Sunday. And we call that the day of celebration. And then we were on Monday, the day of emotions. And then Tuesday was a day of teachings, or a day of questionings, I would say. And then Wednesday was a day of silence, also known as a day of transition. And Thursday, a day of fellowship. And uh, we say a day of transition because 
the first part of the week, of Holy Week, there is praise and adoration for Christ. And then it begins to shift toward the middle of the week. They begin to question uh, Christ and to doubt Christ. <clears throat> then the end part of the week is reject, rejection and betrayal. So Wednesday is that transition day where they go from praise to uh, rejection. And uh, Jesus was, uh, they were all in the upper room uh, the, where they used to had the Passover. And we don't know who they borrowed the Passover room from, but someone was kind enough to allow them to use the upper room. And this is where they uh, had the day of fellowship. And so we'll begin uh, with Wednesday, just mentioning that Wednesday was a time of silence. And it's a reminder to all of us how Jesus, in the midst of the craziness of his life, always took the time to, uh, to really reflect, a time to connect with God, time to get away from the hustle and bustle of everything that was going on, and recharge his batteries. That was a great example for us. You know, we, uh, we're taught that we are to have a good work ethic, and that's important. And we know some people who, who don't have that. But we are also know people who don't know how to rest. They don't know how to take a break, and they don't think it's a good thing. But we're taught from Scripture and from Jesus the importance of being able to, to not only rest, but to connect. Find things, whether it's in nature or something that you enjoy or something that connects you with God. You and the Creator uh, being able to connect, whatever that thing is, it's important that you fit that into your busy life. You know, the disciples were, and Jesus, were very busy. They had a lot going on, a lot of people that wanted to follow them and hear their teachings. And yet, Jesus said it's important for us to take a break. In fact, you know, that was part of the, uh, what it was commanded in the Old Testament to the Jews. The day of Sabbath was a day of, of rest. And, uh, you know, the, the Jews had several laws like that, like the, the ever so many years, over 50 years or whatever, they would let the land rest. And there were good reasons for that. But the point is that God understands that on the seventh day, God rested when he created the earth. And it's important for us to find those times. They don't have to be on, you know, the same day. You can, whatever, it's just important that you do it, uh, that you find that. And it's important for us to realize that in this life, as we're always giving and giving and giving, uh, if we're never, you know, if our cup is continually to pour out and we never replenish it, that we will eventually become empty and will burn out. In the hospital setting, the healthcare setting, there's something called compassion fatigue. It's something that you, you know, you're always giving to others and you're seeing people in their sorrows and death and all that. And if you don't have a way to filter that and to replenish that, then you can become burnout and compassion fatigue. So we come to this part on Thursday that we call a day of fellowship. And the disciples are in the upper room. And they are having what is known as the, the cedar. The Last Supper really was the Passover. And the Passover, and cedar means order, that there, there's an order in the cedar. And the Passover is something that the Jews, uh, most all Jews around the world, uh, have celebrated for many, many, many years. And there is an order to what they do, and everything has to be a specific order and a specific purpose for, for what they do. And so the Jews having Passover was something common, and it was also something that they did it together. They, uh, they were able to recognize by doing the Passover, really it was a picture of them being delivered while they were in bondage in Egypt as slaves. And so the Passover for them was a picture of coming out of that bondage, and everything represented something. But for us as Christians, as we get to the New Testament, we see 
that Jesus took it to a new level. So on the night when Jesus was betrayed, they were sitting around having their annual fast over, uh, Passover fast, and when Jesus changed things a little, around a little bit. This became the Last Supper, uh, but he was, they were actually doing the traditional cedar, the uh, Passover. Um, so as we look at this, we can see some strong symbols of Christ. And these are some things that, that they do every, every time they do it. Uh, first of all, they have the shank bone of a lamb. This, the shank bone of a lamb is something that every time they had Passover that they would, they would do. And, you know, in Exodus chapter 12, the Bible says that Jesus, or not Jesus, but God told them to put the blood over the doorpost. And he was going to pass through, the death angel would pass through. And if they saw the blood on the doorpost, it was the blood of a lamb, by the way, that he would pass over. Passover, but therefore Passover meal. So every time they celebrated the Passover meal, they were thinking back to the Passover, and the shank bone of the lamb was a reminder of the lamb that uh, was slain in order to have redemption. Now, who does that remind you of? Well, we're not, we know that. Jesus is our Passover lamb and that he was slain for our redemption and that we not only look backwards but we look forward and every time we have communion it's a picture of that very thing. And uh, so the Lord said he would pass over their homes and preserve their lives within. Uh, so for the Jews it was a symbol of salvation in Egypt and redemption from, from that but it's also a picture of Jesus as a Lamb of God. And then we have the matzah bread. And I've, I've got, this is actual genuine matzah bread. I uh, ordered it, and it, it's not matzos, but it's pronounced usually matzah. Uh, but interesting, some interesting things about the matzah bread. Uh, they really do provide a picture, I think, of Christ. Now, when the Jews are sitting around doing their uh, traditional Passover, they're not uh, pro themselves thinking how this represents Christ, but we can see it as Christians how everything that is part of that represents Christ in it. Uh, first of all, there is a chamber that they use, and this is called the ikad. The ikad is a chamber with three uh, three compartments, but it's one chamber, and so uh, the ikad means one. You know, in, and it said, you know, like in Deuteronomy, our Lord is one God. That's Ikad. And so we can see here how this chamber, though it's one, all sewn together, it has three different compartments with the matzo bread. Uh, Wednesday night we talked about the Trinity. And Johnny made these little things up. It's really cool. Uh, which represents the uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And... Uh, Tell me again what it's called, the uh, shamrock. Yes, sorry, it left me there for a second. The shamrock is a beautiful picture of the Trinity with the three leaves. You probably can't see that, and we're welcome to come up later. Uh, but it's one, it's one, so it represents the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the same way, the, uh, the matzah bread and the ikad represents that as well. So looking at this, you have three compartments, and in the first one, you have this compartment with the matzah bread that's inside. It's never touched, and it's never used. It's never seen. The second one is a piece of bread, and they would take the, uh, the matzah bread and break it in half, and they would place that matzah bread inside that second compartment. One half would go inside it, and the other half would go in the linen, linen cloth that we have. And so this linen cloth would then be placed somewhere in the house, hidden, for the children to find. And the children would go look for that linen cloth, and it would have the, uh, the matzo bread, the, other, the part that was broken. The third compartment was the matzo bread that was used to eat actually the cedar meal with. And so you can see a picture here of, of the Trinity, but also you can see a picture of how that the Father, which is never seen, 
You know, God is no, no man has seen God. No one can live and see God. So God is uh, a spirit. God is spirit. And that's the first one. The second one that's broken in half represents the broken body of Jesus. The body that's broken and placed into the, uh, into the middle compartment is a picture of Jesus' broken body for us. And the part that's placed into the linen cloth is a picture of Jesus' humanity. This is a picture of His deity. And the linen cloth itself represents the burial cloth that was wrapped around Jesus. And of course the, the uh, third cloth uh, represents uh, the Holy Spirit. And so you have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That, and these three are one. Now, if you were to ask a Jew, why do you have three... Uh, three different pieces of bread, three different matzahs. They may, some may not really be able to explain it, and some may say, well, we believe the three represents Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But then if you ask them, why do you break Isaac in half? They really don't have an answer for that. Uh, and we understand that that is representing to us the broken body of Christ. You know, just an amazing thing there as we look at that. And so uh, you see the Trinity, you, say, you see the matzah, and as I said, uh, uh, most, this is called, uh, if you're English speaking, a lot of times they call it a fecalman, uh, but probably Hebrew closer would be the afikulman. Uh, so e e either one, I've heard it both ways. The Athikoman is the uh, linen cloth with the matzah bread in it. Um, so it's hidden, and, and it's just a picture of, of Christ. And, and at a traditional table, they, they would have chairs around, and there would be one chair that was always empty. One chair that was always empty, and that empty chair was uh, for Elijah. So it was always, uh, you could, because the Jews understood that the Scripture said that before the Messiah came, the, that Elijah would return. And so they would always have that empty chair for the coming of Elijah. And oftentimes one of the household members would go to the door, open the door, it was kind of a tradition, and call for Elijah. And uh, then they would close the door and they would say, Elijah has not come yet. Well, we know in scriptures that Elijah has come. Jesus said that Elijah came in the form of John the Baptist. And uh, so another picture here of Christ. Uh, there's some other things that they used. Uh, mentioned uh, there the, some applesauce, basically. Uh, this was usually compi comprised of uh, apples, uh, some sp sweet sauce and spices. And some wine uh, mixed in there, and a little bit of sweetness and bitterness. But uh, all these things represented, uh, along with some herbs and some bitter herbs, uh, you, know, you, you might use horseradish or something, was a picture of their bitterness to remind them of the time that they were in bondage and how that God brought them from that. And you, you and I know that we were once in bondage as well, right? We were, we were enslaved in sin, and, and, a, and Jesus brought us out of that, brought us from that to His, his life. There's also the egg that's used as well, and the egg was often used uh, for some reason with mourning and different things. All these are pictures of, of what they would do. Another interesting thing they have is they have four cups of, of wine. And uh, the first cup is the cup of sanctification. Now all these come from Exodus chapter 6 verses 6 and 7. You can look it up. So when they do this, Exodus 6 and 6 and 7, they have this cup of sanctification. And Christ said there, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Exodus chapter 6. And so that cup of sanctification is a picture of God bringing them out from the bondage of addiction. And for us as Christians, we remember that Christ brought us out of our bondage. Then there's the cup of deliverance, the second cup. I will rescue, he says, I will rescue you from bondage. The cup of deliverance. Christ delivered us from our sins. An interesting thing I'll tell you in just a minute is Jesus on the uh, night of His betrayal, he, he, he picked up the first cup first. And that was a cup of sanctification. And said, you will not see me again until uh, I'm seated with the Father. 
Then uh, the third cup here is the cup of uh, redemption, where it says, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. The cup of redemption, how that God redeemed them from slavery and bondage. And we are reminded how Christ redeems us as well. And then the fourth cup is known as the cup of praise. And he says in Exodus, I will take you as my people. I will take you as my people. And so, as I mentioned, on that night in which Jesus betrayed, they were sitting around having the Passover. And as they were doing it, all of a sudden, Jesus picks up the first cup, which is the tradition, and says, you will not see me again until you see me with the Father. And he said a prayer. And later on in the meal, he takes that third cup. And he picks up the third cup, which is the cup of redemption. And he says to them, this is the cup of my blood, the covenant I'm making with you. Do this as often as you do in remembrance of me. This cup is the cup Jesus is using to signify his blood that would be shed. And it was something completely out of the ordinary for the disciples. Jesus was taking the Passover to a whole new level. From then on, after Jesus come out of the grave, the Passover would no longer be the, old, the traditional Passover for Christians. It would now be the Lord's Supper. And they would always take that cup of redemption, as we do every time we have communion, and we offer it in reminder of the blood that was shed for us, and the, bre and the bread that was the broken body of Christ. I'll show you a couple interesting things about the matzah bread. The matzah bread had to be made and baked a certain way. First of all, it had to be unleavened bread. It couldn't have yeast in it. When the, when the Jews uh, were leaving out of Egypt, they didn't have time to allow their bread to rise. So they had to use unleavened bread. Therefore, every year after that, they would have uh, a time when they would remember this with unleavened bread. So it had to be unleavened bread. Leaven in the Bible often represents sin, and we're reminded that there's no sin in the body of Christ. Secondly, you may not be able to see it too well here, but you can look at it later. It has stripes on it, right? All the matzah breads has stripes on it. And we're reminded that Jesus Christ was beaten for us. The Bible says that with His stripes we are healed, praise God. The stripes represent for us the broken body of Christ. But if you look real close, you'll also notice there are holes, piercings through this bread. And we know that Jesus, the Bible says that He was pierced for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And His body was broken for us. And all these things here are a picture of this life of not only the Passover, looking backward, but for us, it's a wonderful picture of what Christ did for each and every one of us. It's an amazing thing. So Jesus fulfilled the Passover by becoming our sacrifice, our Passover, really. Jesus became the sacrifice for us. And so as we think about this, and we think about that, that last night, we know that the Bible says that Jesus, Judas betrayed Him. And Jude, Judas walks out, and, and the disciples, it says they sung a hymn and they departed. Which is a reminder of us of our need in the toughest of time to fellowship. And to be with one another. To be brothers and sisters in Christ together. And this was the night that Jesus would be betrayed with a kiss. And I often wonder why a kiss. You know, it was natural for a Jew would to greet one another with a kiss. It's not our custom, but it was a custom and still is in many Eastern countries. But, you know, you would think Jews, Ju Judas would have portrayed him, you know, in, in some way other than that, because it was the ultimate betrayal. I mean, he could have smacked him. He could have hit him. He could have said, there he is. But he betrayed him with a kiss. 
a kiss uh, in, in, in the sense of saying, I love you and, and you're, one of, you're my friend. But really, Jesus understood what the kiss was. It was a kiss of betrayal. And you and I have betrayed our king many, many times. We've walked away, we've, we've hurt him, and we've done the wrong thing. And thank God we have that cup of redemption that forgives us from every sin and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. That cup of redemption, the blood of Jesus, the Bible says, washes us whole. And you know, we can, we can talk about all the sins in the world and all that, but listen, the Bible says that all unrighteousness, and all our righteousness is filthy rags, but all of it is clean by the blood of Jesus. Aren't you glad? I'm going to ask you today if the Lord would lay something on your heart today, if you want to come and, and share something, or you want to, uh, if you want to become a member of the church, if you want to uh, give your life to Christ, if you want to rededicate your life, if you want to just simply pray at the altar, the invitation's open. You can come up as we sing. We're going to ask the musicians to come today. And we're going to sing page uh, 314 in the garden. Stand as we sing number 314 in the garden. Thank you. 
before we do our uh, benediction, I just uh, want to say today that I, I truly hope that uh, for you that are visual learners that, that this has been a blessing, but also that the next time you partake of communion, you'll be reminded of the sacredness of what an important thing it is and how that each part of that uh, represented Christ in that. Yes. Ask people, uh, what is the name of for the past few days of uh, my friends that I went to nursing school with, 51 years ago. And I don't, I, I prayed about it last night. Just heavy on my heart that maybe one of them is having problems. Hmm. I don't know who it is. I don't know really how to contact them. So uh, it's the uh, class of 1970. <laughs> He got a hospital school nursing in Nashville. I just feel that someone is needing prayer. Okay. All right. Thank you. We'll pray for your, your classmates. They're very simple. All right. Anybody else have anything on their heart before we close? Okay. I would like to put my son on there. Uh, he, is, he has so much pain in his back that his words and his control is, is loose. And I let him come to the house last night to bath and clean up and wash his clothes. So pray that God will open his heart. Okay. We'll pray about that. Thank you for sharing. All right, let's hear the benediction, and you can join with the response. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Let's sing the first verse of number 664, sent forth by God's blessing.